Dr. Gil Blander is the CSO of Insider Tracker, a company he founded with a team of experts from MIT, Harvard, and Tufts University. Insider Tracker uses big data analytics to determine personalized, optimized zones for key biomarkers and offers science driven nutrition and lifestyle advice. And with that, let me start the interview. Dr. Blander, you are the founder and chief scientific officer of Insider Tracker. So welcome to Modern Health Plan. It's a great pleasure to have you on our channel today. It's a great pleasure to join you, Richard. Thank you. So Dr. Blander, can you give a brief introduction to your background and why you became interested in aging? Yes, so I'm a a scientist in background, PhD from the Weizmann Institute of Science. And then I've done a postdoctoral fellowship at MIT at the lab of Lenny Garenta, which I assume that you heard and know well. Um, and from very young age, I was fascinated by the aging process. And actually, that's why I decided to study aging. And that's why I decided to join uh, the lab of Lenny Garenta. I spent five years there uh, studying uh, aging on the CIR2 family, on uh, some uh, other uh, protein that related to longevity. Um, such as uh, uh, SOD and uh, CLOTO and other. And uh, I also uh, studied there some uh, other uh, interesting, let's say, uh, tissues or uh, cell cultures such as uh, keratinocytes and uh, fibroblasts and seeing what is the effect of uh, overexpression or uh, RNAi, which is inhibition of genes, and what is the effect of uh, cellular senescence. Um, So that's uh, uh, my background in a nutshell in the academia. Okay, thank you. So then you founded Insider Tracker in 2009. So I was thinking that was very early in terms of like preventative medicine and also using big data as a method of looking at biomarkers. So can you talk a little bit about the starting of the company and how did you see the opportunity uh, at the time? Yeah, it's a, it's a very good question. So when, when I arrived to Lenny's lab, I started to be exposed to the biotech pharmaceutical environment of uh, uh, the companies around MIT. There are around 1,000 companies around MIT. And Lenny at that time had his own company. David Sinclair, which I assume that you heard about as well, had his own company as well. And uh, we, we are a good friend. So uh, he invited me to visit. That, at that time, it was Sirteris Pharmaceutical. Uh, that work on uh, an effect of a a serotonin uh, activator on longevity. Uh, I was also partnering with another company that uh, was spin out of uh, uh, Boston University, and I worked together with them. And uh, also, I was fortunate enough to work on uh, keratinocyte differentiation, as I said before, and uh, that was in partnership with Estee Lauder, the cosmetic company. So, so all of that uh, uh, basically showed me that uh, working in the industry is not bad. It's actually very interesting and might be even better than being a professor in the academia. And uh, that's why at that time I decided to actually try it. So I moved from the academia to the industry and spent a couple of years in a computational biology system, biology company. And there I learned a lot about system biology and computational biology and big data and realized that uh, that's the future. And uh, during that time, I done a, an interesting experiment on a caloric restriction, which I assume that you know well as well and your audience know well as well. So I, I uh, tried to gather all the publicly available uh, data set of uh, caloric restriction and try to understand using our uh, computational uh, power what is happening under the hood for a, a caloric restriction? So I gather a lot of data of microarray data of mice and rats and other, and I combine them together and run this analysis. And I found that there are around 18 different processes that are uh, playing a, a role in caloric restriction, the insulin pathway, the serotonin pathway, and other. And, but in addition to that, I, uh, I had a couple of, a couple of controls. One of them was uh, the resveratrol, the experiment that David Sinclair published at that time that showed that actually resveratrol can extend the lifespan of a high weight uh, mice. And also another control was to compare young and old mice. So I ran uh, ran those control in parallel to the caloric restriction. And what I found that uh, each of those control 
showed an overlap of only 10% of the processes that are modu modu modulated by caloric restriction. So my conclusion from that was that the best uh, caloric restriction mimetic, resveratrol, at that time, only cover around 10% of the processes that are changing by caloric restriction. So my, uh, based on that, I said, okay, the second best will cover 7%, and the next one 5%, and so on. So I said, okay, we might need 20 different uh, small molecules in order to cover all the caloric restriction. And I said, why should we use a small molecule and drugs? Why can't we use a food as a drug of choice? Why can't we move the, the drug cabinet from uh, the bathroom into the refrigerator? So uh, the idea was, okay, let's try to understand what's happening in the body of each of us, okay? And then based on that, let's uh, recommend them the right food for them and hopefully allow them to live longer, better life. Um, so in order to do that, we, um, we started to look into the battery of uh, blood biomarkers that available that were uh, available by a normal uh, diagnostic lab. And we looked at the uh, data from uh, Quest Diagnostic and we realized that actually there are around 4,000 different blood biomarkers that are available. So we realized that uh, you don't have enough blood in your vein to test all of them. And also you might not have enough money in your pocket to pay for all of them. So we started to spend, and I, I spent with my team maybe a few years just to go one by one and try to see whether those blood biomarkers fit for us. So we wanted to find biomarkers that are for health and not a disease. Biomarkers that you can modulate by food, supplement, exercise, and lifestyle changes. A biomarker that at least 1% of the population have an issue with, because we didn't want to test something that only one of uh, in a million suffer with. So based on that, we go to a battery of uh, blood biomarkers that today are around 45, and we are adding uh, every year a few more. So, so that was the process for blood biomarkers. Later on, we uh, realized that uh, uh, the data from DNA is good enough. Uh, so we started to, uh, to add DNA data and basically look at a, a score, a DNA score, of a, a SNP score of a specific issue. So for example, do you have high risk for high cholesterol? or do you have high risk for high glucose, or do you have high risk for low uh, testosterone? Um, so that was another addition. So basically, instead of looking only on blood, we now uh, are looking on blood and DNA. And recently, we added also data from uh, fitness trackers, so Garmin, Fitbit, Apple Watch, and that's allow us to look at physiological markers, such as uh, resting heart rate, deep sleep, REM sleep, and we are adding more and more. And that's allow us actually to receive a uh, even a 4K definition of your body. So we understand your body very well. And then based on that, we can give you the best recommendation that is uh, uh, good for you in order, hopefully, to allow you to live better, longer life.